Hello everybody. My prototype is at a stage where I need to put characters in, so I figured I'd go through some of my thought processes with characters, how I put characters into the game. And these are 3D characters, so that requires some modeling, right? Well, that's the first thing that most people start to panic when they start to think about it. Oh my gosh, modeling? Oh no, maybe I should just buy a canned character from the asset store. You can do that if you want, but I prefer to start with a base mesh. I very rarely start modeling from scratch, um, just because it takes a long time. Uh, and when you are modeling a human, there are only so many places that humans bend or sag, so it's a pretty well understood topology. And that means that people have already gone out there and created models which have really fantastic topologies. So you don't have to keep agonizing over exactly how the shoulder connects or whatever, because people have already done that. These are really excellent meshes, and these are all CC0. These are make human meshes. Make human meshes are free. They're CC0, meaning they're public domain. You can use them however you want. So what I do is I get the mesh I want from make human, and I just change the character around to be, you know, whatever kind of character I need them to be. And then I export them into Blender. You can either export them pre-rigged, or if you, like me, don't like their rigging, you can always rig it yourself. Just export the mesh. Uh, and of course, if your proportions aren't exactly right, like you want to create something cartoonish, you can always drag it around in Blender or Maya or whatever you're using. You don't have to keep it like this. But the mesh topology is extremely good. So if you do drag it around, it's really, really resistant to warping. Which is great. This is pretty much the ideal mesh for every time I've used it. Um, and what I've done here is I've exported the three basic meshes for the same character. This is the default character. Default mesh, muscular mesh, and the 1600 mesh. Let's talk about deciding between these three. Um, when you're just getting started at creating a character, you should already have it in mind what you need. Maybe doodle it if you, if you have any artistic abilities at all. Because you're going to have to add clothes and hair and gloves and whatever else to this character. And that means that you're going to have to understand how to do some basic modeling. But the nasty complexities of the human body have already been worked out for you. And that's a huge step uh, that you don't have to worry about. So let's talk about those nasty complexities so you understand what you're getting into. The basic make human mesh is extremely good, and all three of these meshes have a very, very solid UV mapping already completed for you, so you don't have to map it all yourself. You can just build in the texture later or, or use theirs. Um, and their mesh is ready to rock. Now, a couple of things about this mesh. As you can see, it weighs in at 30,000 tries. That's pretty heavy. Um, that's way too heavy for a mobile game, and it's generally too heavy for more or less any game. Unless you only have one or two characters in your game, you're going to want to cut that back. I guess it might not be as true these days as it is in the past. Um, optimization uh, in the rendering pipeline has made this sort of character less awful. Um, if you do have a 30,000 uh, vert character, you drop it into the scene, you're probably going to be okay, but you may experience some slowdown. It's a heavy character, is what I'm saying. That's because this character is built for 3D rendering rather than game dev, uh, and it kind of shows. Um, one of the things that this character has a lot of that you might not need is face, fingers, and toes. See how many faces there are in these things? They're huge. They're incredibly dense. And more than that, you're going to need all that ear complexity? <laughs> well, if you wanted to save tries, you could go in and replace all the pieces that you're not planning on using. You're going to be doing this anyway to some extent. So if you are going to be creating a character that has clothes, you're going to be deleting all this stuff here. If you're creating a character that has a helmet, they're probably not going to have their ears showing. If you're going to have a character that has boots, then you're going to chop off this 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 faces, however many that is. Uh, probably probably a lot. Let's just go ahead and try and see how many faces that is. Uh, it's 1,000 faces for one foot, which is like 2,000 tries. So basically, when you are actually modeling the character, you're going to be removing a lot of this complexity. And the same is true of the face except it's a little bit difficult to remove this complexity if you're not careful. Uh, now, most games, you are going to be mostly featuring the character from the back, uh, but if you are going to show anyone's face, you can't just willy-nilly reduce the complexity here, 
or you will start to see some pretty bad warping. But there are places where you can. For example, these here. You could remove all of those loops, and you wouldn't lose too much in the way of the face. And it would really reduce your poly count. Same with a lot of the nose. But here is what you have to avoid. You can't reduce any loop that doesn't loop back on itself. Anything that ends in one of these poles is something you don't want to get rid of. So most of these lips, that's all good stuff you can delete. But as we get further out, we're going to run into poles. See? After you get a little bit used to it, you can immediately start to identify poles. Uh, they're really obvious when you know what you're looking for. But those are the things when you are editing, you don't want to damage those. And that's true of whether you're adding to them or deleting from them. Be careful of, of those poles. They, they, are, they break the loops up. See? So if you were planning on simplifying this character, you could do it. You could really chop out a lot of these loops. As long as you avoid the poles, you can get a lot of them simplified down. And I really recommend focusing on the hands, feet, and face, because that's where all the density is. And that's the th those are things that many players will never see. So in my opinion, this could use some more optimization for game purposes, but it is very good for most other purposes, and it serves for game purposes. Just remember, this character is modeled with full teeth and interior on the mouth. Um, you can open this mouth up and, and look inside if you would like. See? I didn't export the teeth, but it comes with teeth as well. So that's, that's complexity you may not need, and you can simplify that out. You don't have to start by simplifying that out, but you can save a good 5,000, 10,000 tries doing that. Um, and that will bring your character down into a slightly heavyweight, but not overweight character model. Once you start adding in your clothes and stuff, you're going to see that count go back up. So the goal here is not to get below 30,000. The goal here is to not go too far over 30,000, if you can avoid it. That really depends on your target. Um, if you're trying to go for a PC game, you may not really care. It might be okay at 30,000. Uh, it might be okay at 100,000. But if you are trying to aim for a mobile game or a game with lots of characters on the screen, this might just be too heavy. That's where the 1600 comes in, this blow-up doll character over here. The 1600 is perfect for mobile gaming. As you can see, it has 1600 verts, and it only has 3,000 tries. Great for mobile gaming. Um, and even for PC gaming, if you need, you know, long-range characters, mods, uh, mobs, the sorts of things that the players won't see up close, this is very good. Once you add in clothes and stuff, most of the parts of this character that look iffy are going to go away. Um, for example, once you add in your own shirt or your own pants, it's not going to look so much like a blow-up doll anymore. Also, this character reacts fairly well to having itself changed over here in our... Um, uh, there we are. Uh, over here in our in our editor here. So uh, it is a character that looks good at a variety of shapes, even though it's super, super low res. This is a decent enough character. Moreover, uh, again, all of the complexity is found in the fingers and in the face. If you don't need fingers and face, then you can chop this down even further using a mitt or a textured face uh, or a face that can't open its mouth. Um, you can get this down to easily, easily down to uh, 2,500 tries, maybe, maybe even less. Notice that it does not have toes, however. This is not as well optimized as the other meshes in terms of some of the loops are pretty bad, especially the toes here. But those are things you're going to be deleting away when you are uh, creating boots and stuff. So all of the parts of this mesh that I'm not fond of tend to go away. Another thing, another thing I'm not fond of, I'm not fond of the shoulder, but I can't really help that. You would need to add a lot more density there in order to make a shoulder I like. And uh, I'm not really fond of the crotch, but if you're adding on pants, that's fine, so who cares? The reason I don't really like this crotch is because if you do any kind of side leg motion, like a side kick, it's going to look unnatural and really stretch. One of the great things about this model that puts it heads and shoulders above most other low-poly models is this loop right here. This loop is an incredibly useful loop for front motion. So if you're doing a front kick or you're raising your leg up, you can set it up so that it will bend on this loop and you will have a very natural feeling uh, uh, raised leg. 
Uh, now the, the you, you have to be a little bit careful about how you how you place the bones, and the default rigging doesn't do it very well. But you can get a lot of performance out of this particular uh, pelvic structure that normally you'd have a hard time getting at this kind of low poly level. And I think that that's great. Um, this is a very very good low poly figure. Over here we have the crowning achievement of uh, the of the uh, Make Human team, and this is the uh, uh, it's almost the exact same size as the other one, but it has a lot more definition. This is the muscular version. The muscular version has a couple of characteristics that the other version doesn't have, mostly in that it builds the uh, body up with a few extra tries here and there, a few extra faces here and there, to create definition right here in the base mesh without any of the uh, any of the tricks you would need to use if you were going to create all this definition using just textures. So it's built right into the mesh, this beefiness. If you're looking to make a beefy character, I don't know of any other um, base mesh that performs nearly this well. Now again, the problem is this is 30,000 tries. It's a heavyweight mesh. But if you need to have a beefy character, this is not a bad way to get started. The downside of this is that unlike the other characters, this one is much harder to uh, clean. If you're trying to delete tries, you're going to find that you are limited specifically to the faces I covered before. Areas on the face, areas on the fingers, and of course replacing the toes with like shoes or something. Um, you can't really clean up the body any because there are very, very few uninterrupted loops. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of this um, stuff in here to add in a lot of added definition, but that means that you end up with a very choppy set of loops. Still animates great, but you can't easily uh, delete any of the detail. Now to just show you the quick difference here, take a look at the shoulder and bicep definition, and of course the definition of the abs here as we move over to the other character. See, it's all gone. These straight lines here, they, they work fine, but they don't give you that heavy muscle definition. This heavy muscle definition is really hard to do on your own. And the reason for that is because you have to make it so that it looks good, regardless of what your character is doing. You can make meshes that look great when they're in whatever pose you posed them in initially, but as soon as you start to move the character around, things start to look bad. This is not one of those meshes. This mesh looks great regardless of how you bend and twist it. As long as you stick to human limits, the, the mesh's uh, faces all do just fine. When you raise the arm, everything bunches correctly. When you lower the arm, everything moves correctly. When you twist the arm, the bicep moves correctly. Same with the legs. Uh, and of course, all of these muscle groups can be played up or played down as you need to. Obviously, not every character is a muscular, beefy character, but I thought I would make it super, super clear that there is now a very, very good high muscle definition base mesh out there, and it's CC0, so you should definitely give it a check. Now, once I've decided on which of these models I'm going to use, I have to make sure that my character is ready to get put into this model. I have to get myself ready with hair and clothes uh, and all of that stuff, so that means that I have to think ahead and I have to make sure that I have that all sketched out. Uh, in this case, it's not, I'm, I haven't finished that yet because this is just uh, a quick setup, but I thought I would mention a couple little details about character uh, creation when you're actually um, planning out your character. You need to keep the camera angle in mind. Now, if you are going to do a typical over-the-shoulder third-person shooter type thing like this, this might be all of the character that you ever see. And that means that anything that you want to make the character iconic has to go back here. So that might be hair, special special shoulder pads, special belts, special uh, gloves or something. If their face is unique or if they're wearing a cool shirt or whatever, you're not going to see that from that angle. Of course, if you have a longer angle like this, maybe you'll be able to see everything back here, but you still won't be able to see the front of the character. So when you define your character, you're going to have to define them, understanding that the back of the character is what people are going to see. But that's only true of the player. The non-player characters, you may only see them from the front. You may almost never see them from the back. So when you're designing your characters, you have to think about the situations where they'll be appearing and how the camera will be falling on them. You can save yourself a lot of pain if you focus on where the camera can see 
understanding that uh, if the camera can't see it, then it's never going to matter. The other thing to keep in mind is that not all games are from straight on like this. A lot of games are, you know, kind of god games where you can see from above like this. Um, so if I were to just show you this sort of uh, position back and front, this is the sort of thing you're likely to see in my newest prototype. This is the this is the kind of uh, position that the characters are in, and this means that you get a lot of the top of their head, a lot of their shoulders, front and back. But anything that is down here near the feet, I'm going to have to be careful how that looks because I'm not seeing it square on. I'm also not going to be able to see a lot of the facial definition because the face is going to be hidden uh, by the perspective. And that means that if I want to have my characters have interesting faces, I'm going to have to radically increase the size of their heads. And this is what I would call the Animal Crossing approach. They have these giant bobble heads, and that works great if you're going to use animal heads as your heads, because each animal has a radically different topology. And if you look at Animal Crossing, you can see how every character in Animal Crossing has a unique uh, look to their head, and a unique shape to their head, a unique color pattern. Uh, and that's specifically because their head dominates the camera view when you're looking at them. All you can see is their huge head, and then like just a tiny bit of their dress. So in Animal Crossing, you have huge heads because your heads vary. But if you're going for human characters, the shape of a human head doesn't really vary that much. So you really would do better to play up the shapes that do vary. The shoulders, uh, uh, the belly, um, the pose of the hands and arms, and of course the hair. Uh, all of those things make for more character definition than just changing the human face. Because if you're looking at it from this angle, can you freaking see the human face? I can't. So. When you're designing your character, keep your camera angle in mind. Keep in mind how you're going to define your characters differently based on what the camera can see. And keep in mind that your characters have to be distinct from each other. And start with a base mesh so you don't drive yourself mad trying to, uh, trying to get these exact perfect mesh lines that someone else has already got and given to you. Just use them. Be grateful. Someone at MakeHuman spent like 10,000 hours on that. Have a good one.